I'm Ms. Barrow. Welcome to Northern High School. This is my first period CFA Honors English class. Hope you enjoy today. All right, so let's talk about the first question. Who will read it, please? And then let's discuss it. Somebody, somebody who I love. Oh, Greta, you please. Read quite, oh, I know. Okay. Question one, please. All right, describe Rachel using the details in the passage. What the details reveal about her. And what do they? Well, what do they in that first in that first section? We've got three paragraphs, right? What's happening in the first three paragraphs? Do we know it's an I and do we know it's Rachel yet? No? Yes? No. How do why do we, why don't we know it's Rachel yet? What's happening? She's she's using you. Okay, she's using you and she's explaining what, Nadeja? Right, she's talking about what being 11 feels like, right? So we get what in these first three par paragraphs before we get the I. We get the perspective, right? So in that perspective, we start to understand her. So what are some of the things that are details about her in her perspective in the introduction that allow us to understand her? I know it's been a holiday break and our brains are a little, but yes, Paris. She's kind of a complex mind. Okay, complex mind, good, because she's able to do what? What are the examples in here that show that? Yes, explaining that you're all of these ages, right? Within 11. Okay, good. So she's got this complex idea that she's trying to convey, but she's 11. Okay, Ed. Um, she's really intelligent and sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, she has a lot of, she explains things a lot using metaphors and similes, um, which is something I feel like most people that young don't do very often. Or she does it, but doesn't realize that's what they're called, yeah. right? Yeah. It's um, like this, you know, it's like that. And she kind of, it's the voice that comes out, right? Yeah, Where would you say her voice starts to come out? Is it in her thoughts? Or is it, does it begin when she speaks and there's dialogue? What do you think? In her okay, give me an example. Someone raise your hand and tell me where the example is of her thoughts that sound. Sam. I think the second paragraph is where it really starts because that's when she starts to talk like, that's when the sentence structure seems more like childish. Okay, give me a specific something. I mean, you could actually read the whole paragraph, but give me one line from it that's really 11 year old oriented. Like some days you might say something stupid. Okay, and what does she equate that to? That's the part of you that's Ten. Ten. That's that complex mind part, right? Where did she say something stupid? Or she uses the word stupid again, which is a repetition, yeah? Mm -hmm. And also pushes the point that her, what's it called when the narrator speaks? Voice. Good, Parker. The voice is once again 11 years old. We have it on this side. Sylvia stupid Sylvia Saldivar says, right? And someone read that line to me because I want to hear that voice that's clearly... 11 year old. Someone not Paris, because Paris has already spoken three times and she's beautiful. Let's have someone else. Yes, Ash, thank you very much. That was awesome. Would you read this, please? Right here. Maybe the. Yep, that's Am it. I on the right page? Maybe because I'm skinny. It's the second page. You're right. Ah, maybe because I'm skinny. Maybe because she doesn't like me. That stupid Sylvia Saldivar says. Keep going. Uh huh. I think it belongs to Rachel. An Good. ugly. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. An ugly sweater like that, all raggedy and old. But Mrs. Price believes her. Mrs. Price takes the sweater and puts it right on my desk. But when I open my mouth, nothing comes out. All right. So what in there is really 11 years old? What is not the way that you think anymore? If you're, if this was happening to you, if I was forcing you to take a sweater that wasn't yours, <laughs> right? Hmm? Yeah, she said, but when I open my mouth, nothing comes out. But when I open my mouth, nothing comes out, right? And does this sound a little petulant? Maybe because I'm skinny. Maybe because she doesn't like me. That stupid Sylvia sound of her says. A little petulant, right? She's a little bit tantrum, ten, temper tantrum here, right? You know? It belongs to Rachel. That's what I hear in my head. Like a little uh, kind of tone, right? <laughs> so we go, okay, she's 11. Okay, because you don't think in your head anymore that stupid so-and-so, so-and-so anymore. It's a little different. <laughs> adult-like tone, right? Okay, so anything else in here that helps you to understand that not only is she complex, but she's sensitive, because Ad mentioned she was sensitive. Is some of this being sensitive right here, this kind of attitude towards 
Sylvia? Sure, okay. What happens later that we know makes her also sensitive? Yeah, and what's the impetus to the cry? She's forced to put on the Yeah, she's she's forced to put on the sweater, but even before that, is she holding back tears? Yeah. yeah. She's holding back the little animal noises inside of her, right? Remember when she describes it that way? Yeah. Well, who actually describes it that way? Yeah. Sandra Cisneros, the author, right? Okay. All right, so next question. Um... Shania, would you read question two, please? Explain Rachel's feelings as they are as they are described in the passage. List and comment on details in the, pa in the passage and support their your inferences. In mm -hmm. Inferences about her feelings. Okay, so what feelings does she have? Um, and sometimes we have to find what before we start, start talking about the feelings. We've got to find the incidents that occur that make her have a feeling, right? So what, what's happening early on where we can understand how she feels? The sweater thing. Okay, the sweater thing. Yeah, she feels angry. She feels angry, okay, so anger. Let's talk about the feeling of anger, and I do this because, is anger really? What is anger? Someone raise your hand. What is anger? Um, Frustration. It's a secondary reaction. Yes, it's a secondary reaction to sadness, frustration, um, have feeling like someone's not respecting you. You become angry after the other feelings actually start, right? So, what's happening? Someone, someone take us through the plot of what's happening in the story, and you can just go through with your finger and look at what's happening. And Parker, I'm gonna have you do it. Go through and just be like explaining eleven. Like each paragraph, give me a quick little um, paraphrasal summary so that we know where the emotions start to come out and we know, oh wait, this is this. Where do you want them to start? Just at the very beginning. So the very beginning, first paragraph. Um, she's explaining that as you're 11, as you're older, you're still every other age that you've been. And then she goes on to explain how if you say something stupid, then you're 10 and like different emotions correlate to different um, ages and then she explains how growing older she just gives another example of how growing older you get like layers like an onion and, and how you are still like very um, you're all the ages inside yourself yeah. okay so good so at this point Parker and anyone else have we gotten emotional here have we gotten a feeling from her we've gotten this what is she smart. complex mind smart and she's explaining how 11 is really no different than 10 at this age versus this age. But has she started sharing her feelings about whatever's happening? No. no. Okay, so now we have a shift, right? Remember we said there was a shift in these paragraphs? Because she starts using the I, yes, okay, as a narrator. Does anyone want to take over for Parker? I mean, we know Parker can do it, so... Mm, Kaylin, how about you? Why don't you take over? Why don't you start from this point forward? Where's the attitude? Read the section and tell me what's happening where you feel like, and when you say attitude, we sometimes have modern ways of saying things like, oh, he's expressing all his feels, right? The feels. Feel that is so slang. Let's talk about it in a way that we would talk about in here. Makes sense what I'm saying? So when you say attitude, that doesn't necessarily mean attitude the way I think of attitude. If someone gives me attitude, there's only one way to talk about that. So I don't know that it's attitude in that way so give me the the right attitude that's when she started to get like upset and angry okay like her teacher and then because what's happening what happens that that, that gets her angry Bef because it's before the red that sweater. the red sweater well the teacher's trying to find out who the red sweater is and that's okay when Sylvia comes in. It's like, oh, it's Rachel. okay Rachel's like, that's right but how does she say it So what did we talk about the other day? This young girl has a little voice, which really means she has no voice. So what is really making her angry? And I say angry because I don't really feel she ever gets angry in here. Okay, so what is that feeling? Frustration. Frustration. So here's this child who wants to say, this ugly red sweater is not mine. 
but she can't because why is her re what's her reasoning about the teacher in that, Kaylin? The teacher thinks it's hers, but she explains it. She says, the teacher's this, and therefore she's right and I'm wrong. What's that whole thing about? Find that quote. It's further down. It's about two-thirds down. Oh, the teacher said, I remember you wearing it because, oh, because she's older and she's right and I'm wrong. Yeah, so because she's older and the teacher, I think it says somewhere yeah, in there, indeed. she's right and I'm not. So she really has no voice. Even if she said, no, it's not mine. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. The teacher's already told her it's hers, so I guess the sweater's mine. So now I'm frustrated because there's this red sweater that she's about to describe in many more horrific ways, right? Okay, so she's frustrated. So let's, let's go with this one. She's frustrated, right? Not somewhere on the page I don't have up here, right? So, um, Cassandra, why don't you take over from there? I think we're kind of at the bottom here um, where she says this rep repetition of not mine, not mine, not mine. So what happens here that moves frustration to another level? Can you read through that for me, Cassandra, and just tell me what's happening here in the, in the gist of it? Okay, so the class moves on to math problem something 36 maybe, 49, I don't know. Okay, and how is she feeling? What does she have to do to keep herself from doing what? What is she not trying to do? Cry. cry. And we know that because, uh, Shania, what's the line where she's trying not to cry? What does she say? Um, she says, like the part of me that's three wants to come, wants to come out of my eyes. And how do we know what that already is? Because... She talked about it earlier. Beautiful. So she's already prepped you to understand her storytelling, right? Okay? As a narrator slash the author. Okay? So now what's happening? She's trying not to cry. Is this frustration at this point? Could it still be frustration? Yeah. Is it turning to something maybe? Yeah. What else is it turning into if you're not trying to cry? And you say, what does she say to keep herself from crying? What's happening today? It's my birthday, Jason. It's my birthday. We're turning 11, and who's making cake? Mama. Mama, and who's just saying happy birthday to me? Mama. Mom and Dad. I'm so excited, right? So she says it to herself. I know, it's so, <laughs> it's so what? Sad. Sad. So now what is she feeling? She went from frustration, that's not my, I have no voice, to now I'm, because I'm supposed to be, because it's my birthday. Thank you. So frustration to being sad, right? Because her birthday's already been ruined. Okay, Barker. I feel like it could also be a little bit of like learned hopelessness in a sense. Mm, she's 11. Yeah. I mean, just a little bit because that's, okay. kind of, that's kind of what I get from it. Or like the no voice and she kind of just like sits back and kind of lets things happen. Like this has happened before in a sense. So she's just used to it even though it mm -hmm. still affects her. Okay. Um, what's something that you know is really important to be aware of when you read a text? What have I asked you all to research? The what? So the author's one. What's the other thing? Time period. If this was published in 1991, and this was maybe Sandra Cisneros reflecting on her own childhood, and let's just pretend she was 40 then, in 91, because I have no idea how old she is, but let's just pretend she's 40. Good math, right? Subtract 30 years from that, we're talking 1960-something. What were children taught in the 1960s? Be silent. Only speak when spoken to. Children are meant to be seen and not Okay, so here we have this context that we don't live in. You all were not raised in that way. You were raised, if you have something to say, you have a voice, say it. Right? Weren't you? Most of you? Okay. Now, certain situations you may have been told <laughs> to be quiet, right? But for the most part, if it was about you speaking your ideas or standing up for yourself, you were told to do that, yeah? Not the same era. So, learned helplessness. That's a newer term. That's a newer phrase for people that consistently um, help children out of situations and they never learn to fend for themselves. Is that an accurate term for the 1960s, maybe? So that's where I'm yeah. gonna question and argue that terminology, yeah. okay? Now, what you did say was accurate. 
do we all get the impression this has happened to Rachel before and she just sort of sucks it up? Yeah. Do you think this is though something that happens to a lot of children in that era? Yeah. They just learn to suck it up. They just. <sighs> Thank you for joining our class today. It was a great Thanksgiving holiday, by the way. And uh, we had a good literary review, yeah? Yeah. yeah. What? What?